Hey guys, Vorlesi here. Hope that you're having a great week. I would like you to participate, if you like, in a little tournament we're going to be having, a little campaign rather, not so much a tournament, but a mini campaign called Team Battle Kaldstrom. This will be quite a unique little event in the sense that you sign up, normally you play your games on Tabletop Simulator, just like my other events, but you'll only get two different faction options. You can play for White Banner, or for Svalorema's Winter Force. So normally play whatever faction you want, but for this very special event, it's a team battle between the White Banner people and the Operation Kaldstrom people. So the way that works is that after everybody signed up, we have a group of people on the one side, White Banner, a group of people on the Kaldstrom side, um, the Svalorema Winter Force side, and um, everybody gets just put into these teams in Discord, you get your own track group, and then round by round, once a week, Everybody from Team 1 plays against somebody else from Team 2. So you get one White Banner guy playing against um, this Valorama guy, and they all get paired up with uh, people in the opposite team. Then in the next round, based on your score, see how well you did. Let's say you won your game, you got six objective points. I'll find you somebody from the um, the other team um, who also did similarly to you and put you up against them. So over several weeks, you'll play several games against the other side. So if you're a White Banner player, you'll be playing several games of that same matchup. In fact, everyone's going to be playing that same matchup. It's just going to be game after game after game of White Banner versus Fellaramer, and that's why this is called Operation Kaldstrom. It's a throwback to that time where Corvuspelli released an action pack where, you know, those two factions sort of came out. Um, so if you click on the link in the video description, you'll come to um, my little uh, write-up thingy here. I'll just show it to you really quick. So it looks like this. I'll talk to you about the uh, the rules for it in a moment. But once you've read through this whole document, um, just click on the link to sign up and you'll come to this little form. You can specify your name, which faction you want to be on, and just please tell me that you do agree and understand to the fact that you may not get to play on the team you want to play on if there are too many people uh, choosing that, that same team. So just bear that in mind. Other than that, though, this is a really simple, short, sweet event, and it might only go for a couple of rounds. Um, if we get one team which is just way lopsided, they have all the best players somehow, and it's just like a blowout, then it'll probably only go for a couple of rounds. But if it's really close, it might go for like four weeks. So it's going to be super, super fun. A really interesting one. And yet, I do appreciate that this is happening at the same time that Corvus Belli is about to do one of their, their silly little online campaigns. Um, that's something completely different. This uh, has nothing to do with uh, what they're doing there. Um, just a completely distinct and separate event. Um, no correlation between the two. You might be asking why. Um, why would we do this where we're just restricting everybody to playing um, like one sectorial um, or two sectorials? Um, and the thinking behind it is that neither of these sectorials are particularly overpowered in the meta or underpowered in the meta in my mind. These are both, you know, pretty average sort of sectorials that, you know, have some strong things about them and some weak things about them. And neither team has access to anything that's completely just um, unfairly overpowered. When you think about it, um, White Banner, the best profile in that faction, in my p opinion, is the Shangji AP AP APHMG. It's a very good profile, and we're expecting lots of people to play it. As I'll explain in the rules, but later, we're going to restrict the number of players in each team that can actually have that hot profile. And on the other side, with the Svalorama guys, um, I think, this me personally, but most people agree, that the Kahu Feuerbach is the most, you know, advantageous profile loadout that you can take in that faction and in the same way that team will also be restricted in the number of players that can actually use that profile um, so we're going to start encouraging people to um, play some lists that are a little bit off meta and some people can play the you know the on meta sort of lists but the the fun of this campaign will be that you know you're in a team uh, and you're in a sort of a group environment with experienced players and weak players. And bear in mind, if you're a newbie and you don't know the game very well, you're most welcome to join. And I think the really amazing experience that these campaigns um, show for, for everybody, especially new players, is that the, the experts, like the veterans in the team, are actually like 
incentivized to help you out because their rise and fall and success and failure is going to depend on the result of your game as well people are actually going to listen when you ask them questions and look for advice ask rules questions if you want somebody to look over your army list people will actually do that because they're incentivized to and that's the the main difference between an event like this and for example a Corvus Belli campaign or an ITS tournament or something like that where you're off on your own and, and nobody really cares with this there's really legitimately a group spirit which is just so much fun about it but just coming back to the other main reason why this particular campaign restricts everybody to just these two faction options is that um, nobody really has to worry about um, you know being up against a faction that's just way more more powerful than, than yours is right so you're not having to contend with you know two Polaris bear pods crushing you in turn one. You don't have to think about a way of beating the avatar. You don't have to sort of despair at the thought of walking into the midfield and the guy's got two Morans and Jazz and Billy and Bit and Kit, um, whatever the nomads have these days, almost said Bit and Kit. But you guys get the picture. So the fun thing here is that, you know, it should be a reasonably fair fight. Um, one thing I want people to avoid is that when we do see the outcomes of these games, Please don't try and conclude that White Banner um, or Svelarena is the better faction. It's not really going to come down to that. This campaign will purely be won or lost by whichever team happens to have the stronger players on it overall, right? And there's going to be a little bit of luck involved. But, you know, if, you know, five people per side showed up, or um, let's say ten people uh, showed up per side, and one team has six really good players, and the other team has four really good players, and the rest of the players are, you know, fairly new to the game, then the, the team with six good players will win. Uh, that's just how it's going to work. So try not to read too much into the actual faction balance itself. We're just going to have um, really good fun time and uh, really enjoy the, the campaign spirit and really just celebrate the fact that Infinity can be a balanced game if you kind of force it to be. Um, you know, we're taking one faction that's a, you know, reasonable good, really reasonably good match for the other one, all right? So that's the, that's the thinking behind behind it. Cool, just going to briefly talk you through um, this campaign. A lot of this um, rules document here is cut and paste from my other events, just because I'm, I'm just keeping the text here that's sensible and, and works and, and really has uh, stood the test of time. So much of this will be very familiar to you. Um, We're going to start by playing Frostbite and then Neuralnet. We'll be using two of the maps that I've already created from pre my previous events. These are the cold planet themed, icy snow planet themed maps, which is appropriate for Kaldstrom. I don't know if we'll get to round three and four, but if we do, we'll play a bleak assault and recovery and I'll make up some equally icy and snowy and frosty maps for those missions, okay? Um, most of these are my missions, except for Frostbite, so check out the link here to go to the rules for those. Okay, um, everything else is pretty standard. I'll add the uh, results form shortly. Um, now, for the campaign, um, normally I add in lots of weird and quirky rules about what you can and can't do and just changes to the, the, the core game. I'm not actually doing that. I'm just putting a reminder here that we're not really using the um, Corvus Belli missions except for Frostbite. And if, if any of these rules here come up during Frostbite for some reason, um, we're not using those. But we are using ITS scoring. You know, we will use uh, Classified if, if Frostbite has them. I can't remember if it does or not. But largely, you're going to be ignoring ITS. Um, now, onto the fun stuff. This is what people are here for. I am um, going to sort of steer the campaign a little bit in a sort of off-meta direction, but not by very much. So this is going to be very, very mild, okay? So when you get into your team, your team is going to have, have to have a talk about some of these units here, which the team have to use. You're trying to imagine that you're sort of holed up in your team fortress bunker, and you don't really have enough resources to, to go around, but you do have some of these guys, and you've got to put them to their best use. So let's say that there's 10 people in your team, and absolutely nobody really wants to use any of these profiles here in their list for some reason. You know what, I'm pretty sure that people will actually want to use them either way. But if, for example, you know, everybody agreed we're not going to have a Jujak, or we're not going to have Captain Kiangao in our list, you must force at least one person to pick at least um, one of these things here. So as a team, you will have to discuss amongst yourself which player is going to use a Guija squadron. If, if somebody was already going to use one anyway, um, then you're fine. You're golden. Um, but if, if everybody says, not, um, not me, I don't want to take the Kunai Ninja, I want to take other stuff, sorry, but you as a team, you will have to choose somebody to have that, that model in your list. 
or you'll be penalized, okay? Now, it's fine for multiple people to use this. Like, if everybody in the thing thinks, oh, Jing Ko, she's amazing. Like, if everybody wants to run her, then you guys have no problem, do you? It's a minimum. Also, the person who's using the unit can be different each round. So, round two, little Johnny wants to use Jing Ko, takes one for the team, you throw him under the bus, he's running Jing Ko. And then round two, um, you know, Barry steps up to the plate and says, look, I'll put Jinko in my list and, and Johnny can run something else. Okay, so you can spread it around. Um, and Svalarema, exactly the same situation. You've got the Chaksa long arm, somebody has to take that. Somebody has to use a Locust. Uh, somebody needs to find a use for Uma Sorensen. There's going to be a Boyg in there. Gunnar Lungmark. Somebody needs to run a Knight of Justice. I don't even know why that's there. Knight of Justice is pretty decent. Um, but overall, this is just to sort of partly stop the, the teams from all sort of copying each other's list and having exactly the same one run for the entire thing. All right? But I think you can agree that this is pretty mild. I really don't want to see people complaining about one list has got, you know, the, the tighter conditions than the other. I mean, people are going to tell me that anyway just to be annoying, but I, I do not care. Like, I I just do not give a rat's ass if, if somebody thinks that, you know, one team has got the, the taller order, the stiffer conditions than the other. It just doesn't matter to me, all right? Um, now, while that's going, as I mentioned before, after I've seen the number of people that sign up, I'm going to say that um, up to a certain number of people in each team have to um, forego this profile completely. Let's imagine that there are 10 people per team, and um, I come along and decide that a minimum of uh, three people must run lists that don't have this profile. That means that in addition to uh, choosing somebody to, to actually include these lists, you have to ensure that several people exclude these two profiles. And look, the way that you actually do this is up to you guys. You can come up with whatever combination uh, fits the prescription here. So if, imagine you have one guy coming along and actually wants to run all six profiles and he doesn't want to run the shang -Gi. You know, you've got the you've got the requirement fulfilled. Everybody else in the team, team could do their thing, except for the fact that, you know, there might be a couple more people that also have to drop the shang -Gi. But look, I mean, the other way to spread it around is you go, okay, player number one, you take this. Player number two, you take this. Player number three, you take this. Player number four, oh, you want to take these two, great. Then player number five, you take this. Then, um, you know, player number six, you run whatever list you want, except you can't take this. Player number seven, you run list whatever you want, except you can't take this. And you work it up that way. The best thing to do would be to keep a team spreadsheet or document somewhere that you can show me before the round to prove to me. And then I can just check that with players and opponents because if I catch you guys disregarding this, then there's going to be penalties and you will be embarrassed by that. So... There it is. Um, terrain rules. Um, this is just guidelines. You don't have to use this. Um, I just get asked questions about my terrain quite a bit. So feel free to refer to this document if you'd like some guidance and you don't want to have to sort of argue with your opponent about how to do it. Especially these elevators can be a bit finicky with my um, more recent terrain style. Cool. Okay. Um, well, signups are open, guys. We're going to start on the 14th. That is in a week from now. And it might run for two, three, or four weeks. And yeah, I think it'll be a blast. It's going to be a small thing, just a little mini campaign. I am super busy with Table Game Fun Times, my um, sitcom show for YouTube. Please check that out if you haven't already and leave me a comment. Um, but yeah, just so busy with that show. Um, it's hard for me to do a lot of these tournaments, but I, it's, it's just about time we had something. So I thought I'd put it out there. And I'll be looking forward to your sign up.